It don't sound like maybe either. That sound like whoever is praying confidently in the word of God, they know they got what they prayed for. See, and that's why religion, tradition, causes people not to have confidence in God. Because we have been climbing the rough side of the mountain. We have been calling Jesus on the main line, trying to tell him what we want. And he said, that will not get you the confidence that you need. Because he ain't going to answer you on the main line. He's not the switchboard operator. And so what happens is, this, this is what happens, this is how the devil plays tricks with us. Because we don't get the answer from God that we desire, because we didn't pray correctly, we think that God just didn't want us to have it. Therefore, we don't have confidence in our prayer life because I didn't get what I wanted from God. Well, it's not that God didn't want to answer you, it's that you didn't pray right. You didn't pray right. You, didn't, you, still, you, still, you still praying the, you know, like the Bible says in Matthew, you're just speaking much word, you're praying much words. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to pray all day. Uh-oh. I just I didn't stepped in that. I just stepped, I just stepped in this thing. See, I could pray in a five-minute span and get more things done than others who pray all day long. You know how I can do that? Because I'm going to pray what the word says. I'm going back and tell God, God, this is what you said about my situation. And because I am so confident in your word, I know I got it. So I can get up. I can get up. Look, ain't no sense of me standing there praying all day. Because I know I already got it. I already got what I prayed for. Because I got confidence. This is the assurance that whatever we ask for. And see, I'm glad God says anything. Because now, if I can find it in the word of God, then I can ask for it. Because the Bible says in Psalms 37 and verse 4, that God will give us the desires of our heart. Now, now let me qualify anything. <laughs> I, felt that, I felt that in the spirit. Say, Woo! I will ask us Bobo. <laughs> and Bobo married. To some other woman. No. You get what you ask for when it's in line with the word of God. Okay? And you get what you pray for when you pray according to the word of God. Not how you want to pray. Amen? And watch this, watch this. You don't have to sing a song before you pray. You don't have to get a hum on when you pray. <laughs> Move on, Pastor. See, I'm going to get myself in trouble. I'm going to get myself in trouble. Praise the Lord. This is the confidence. <laughs> the, the, you better stop that. You better stop that. The privilege, the boldness we have in him. That if we ask anything, make any request, Ah, dog it. Make any request. Did, didn't the Bible say, watch this, watch this, watch this. Now here's another thing they do. Here's another thing they do when they, when they, when they don't have confidence. The Lord knows my heart. So therefore I don't have to ask God because the Lord knows my heart. Okay, all right, all right, all right. For those religious folk that say the Lord knows your heart, he does know your heart. But I heard in Philippians, let your request be made known unto God. So if I got to let my request be made known unto God, he must be saying, look, I know your heart, but I need you to tell me something. See, see, here's the thing. The reason why God wants you to let your request made known unto him so that you can have this dialogue with him, this relationship with him. He didn't create robots. He created mankind to have a relationship with him. And when you have a relationship with somebody, you talk to him. You talk to him. You talk to him. Now, now, I'm, I'm going to let y'all in on something, a little something, something, something. In a relationship, 
it is always good to tell the other person how good they are. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I mean, you want to tell them, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Over the last couple of days, shh, don't tell Sister Gwen this. Over the last couple of days, I would let her leave the house to go to school. And then I would text her every day. The last, this, this whole week, I'm doing something right now. I would text her to tell her, this is why I love you. <laughs> oh, 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 Lord, I'm in, I'm in a relationship now because I'm, <laughs> praise the Lord. And so when I think she's about right at school, you know, I, when she's right at school, I just, I, I, I press sin. Uh. I'm dialoguing. I'm letting her know how much, why I love her. And then, see, see, I'm using technology now instead of writing my letter, you know. She get to keep now. She, every day she get to look at that thing like, oh, oh praise the Lord. <laughs> now, now watch this now. If I'm willing to do it with Sister Gwen, huh? What'd you say? Oh, more, more, more men didn't do that? Okay, all right, all right, men, men. I'm, 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 I'm setting it forth for y'all. I, I, I think I'm getting y'all in trouble. But watch, watch this. Okay, y'all cut that out. I, I got to continue my lesson. Now y'all cut that out. Now, if I would do that for her, and she, you know, uh, how, how much more should I do it to God, my father? Now, she can only take care of my physical needs. God takes care of my spiritual needs. And my spiritual needs are more important than my natural needs. So, so, so. I let my request be made known, but before I let my request be made known, I'm telling God how good you are. See, I'm working on something. I'm working on something. John, I, 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 look, I, 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 let, I, look, I ain't asked for nothing. <laughs> I just want to let you know how much I love you. No, hey, hey. Just want to let you know how much I love you. <laughs> look, and after each one I say, this is why I love you. <laughs> Woo, move on, move on, Pastor. I got some folks in trouble. Praise the Lord. Woo. Okay. Psalms 27. Now, y'all might get a text tomorrow from y'all husbands. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Psalms 27. Now, now, now that, brothers, this a word for you. That's a word for you, you know. Don't, don't, don't let the, the fire ever go out. Yeah, it's the little thing. Yeah, it, it, it didn't cost me nothing to send that text. Amen. But I get everything. Yeah. Y'all cut it out over there. <laughs> I don't know what y'all saying, but yeah, I, can, I can see. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I can see something. Amen. Psalm 27. Look at verse number one. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing. Have I desired of the Lord? That will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Look what the psalmist says. I'm confident in this one thing. This one thing I'm confident in, That the Lord is my light 
and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He's the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When my enemies come up against me, the Bible says they will stumble and fall because I have confidence in the things of God. He said, one thing have I desired. One, one, one thing have I desired of the Lord. When you desire to be intimate with God, see, the intimacy is what creates the confidence. I mean, the intimacy is what creates the confidence. Mm. Proverbs 3, Proverbs 3. And you don't create the confidence if you don't talk. Again, you got to talk to God. That shouldn't be a day that goes by that you're not talking to God. You say, well, I can't see him. <laughs> and see, that, that, that's the challenge that many people have. Because they can't see things in the natural, they can't believe for it. Okay, okay. <laughs> you can't see your brain. <laughs> but you might be confident that you have one. <laughs> you, you see how I, I phrase that? <laughs> Proverbs chapter 3. Y'all cutting up tonight. Y'all just cutting up. Y'all cutting up. Praise the Lord. Proverbs chapter 3. Developing confidence in God. Watch this. Look at verse 26. Proverbs 3, verse 26. What does it say? For the Lord, what? shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being what? What you say? God's going to be my confidence. Mm. Huh. Amplify says, for the Lord shall be your confidence, firm and strong, and shall keep your foot from being caught in a trap or some hidden danger. Look at that. When the Lord is my confidence, even though my enemies try to set a trap for me, they can succeed. Now, watch this. A pit is designed to be undercover where you can't see it. If you could see it, you could avoid it. And so what the enemy will try to do is set pitfalls for you in your life. And what God is saying, because I am your confidence, I will direct you around those pitfalls of life because you're my confidence. I won't let your foot stumble. I won't let you fall. Isn't that good that God says that he won't let us fall? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Woo, praise the Lord. Okay, all right, all right. Proverbs 14. Look at verse number 26, Proverbs 14. Verse 26, developing the confidence in God, developing confidence, trust, assurance, amen, total persuasion, hallelujah. Proverbs 14, look at verse 26, Proverbs 14, verse 26. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. So, the Bible says reverential fear of God causes me to have strong confidence. Now, God doesn't want us to be afraid of him. So he's not talking about that type of fear. Well, I'm afraid of God. I don't want to go to God because he might do me something. No, no, God is not like that. He's a loving God. He's a loving father. And so the Bible says when we have a reverential fear of God, that, that that's what causes strong confidence that, in our lives. Amen. And that's why praise and worship is so important. Because as we worship God, we're bowing down before God. Woo. Uh. Reverencing God. Woo. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, okay. Now, now, here, here's how, here's some ways to develop your confidence. You got to study. You got to know the word of God in order to have confidence. Okay? You cannot uh, develop your confidence level without the word of God. So that means you have to study. Not just when church is here, in, but when you're at your own house. Amen. Amen? You cannot 
ha develop this type of confidence when you only hear the word of God once a week. And, you know, my heart goes out to, to, to those believers who, who are in an emotional environment where all they hear is the hooping and the hollering and the singing and never get a solid word for their lives because they can't develop the confidence. No word, no confidence. If you, I mean, if you never hear the word of God, you ain't going to get no confidence. Amen. And my thing is, I give you the scripture so that you go back home and look at it for yourself. You know, because sometimes you'd be like, well, he said this one and I can't get that. Just write it down. And then you go back and study it for yourself. Because I know some of y'all be fake Jake and I be turning over here and over there. And y'all be just looking at me like. <laughs> Secondly, I need to make a choice once I study the word, watch this now, to believe the word of God. To believe it. You know, the praise team was talking about I believe God. His word is true. That's, you, I mean, once I see it, I got to believe it. Amen? And then once I believe it, I need to act on it. This is the only way you're going to develop confidence. See, because if you never take the step of faith to do what you read and see that it works for you, your confidence level will never be uh, uh, high. You know, particularly when it comes, for instance, if, 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 if you don't trust God's plan for financial increase and you don't apply the plan of God for your increase, man, every time, every time you get, it gets tight, the devil going to park on your shoulder and say, don't you, don't you give, don't you dare give that. I don't care if it's a dollar. Don't you dare give that dollar. Because you don't have confidence in God's plan. Amen.